to answer the question. If my rigid body is set to use gravity, but then we hit play, why is gravity not being applied to our MPC? Well, that one's quite simple, and we actually covered it in the documentation. Right here, we are setting the velocity of the rigid body. So no matter what state it's in, if it's in the air or if it's in the ground, we are setting the velocity to have a fixed velocity. So while it's in the air, we've overridden the gravity. We've said no, we're only going to use our velocity. So that explains that. So how do we fix that? Well, what I'm building here is a character controller. And more essentially, this is a rigid body character controller. back on the velocity as you said this can result in unrealistic behavior yes because we modified the velocity and we overread gravity now back to the character controller if you're familiar with the character controller at all you see there's quite an essential variable here it's grounded what's the character controller touching the ground so as I'm building a physics character controller, let's see if we can implement our own is grounded so we can check if we're on the ground. So if we're on the ground, we'll apply our desired velocity. And if we're not on the ground, then we'll just maintain the velocity of the rigid body. We're not going to modify it in any way. So let's create a new variable. Variable, and we're going to call it is grounded. So it's going to do exactly the same thing as the standard character controller scripts. This will be a boolean, and I'm going to set it a default false. So how can we modify this is grounded? How do we know when our character is grounded or not? Well now we need to start looking at some events, particularly collision events. Here we have some commands based on collisions and the collider associated to those collisions. So when our rigid body touches another collider, we can check that with this function on collision enter. Did our rigid body collider come in contact with another collider? So let's add that in. Now first, we only want to be grounded if we actually touch the ground. So in my scene, the ground is currently called floor. Let's write that in. We want a conditional check. We want to check if if our collision and the collider of that collision and then the game object that that collider is attached to and we want to check its name. And we want to check if it is equal to, in my case, Floor. So if this rigid body collider has collided with another collider of a game object that is named Floor, we could say we are grounded. So is grounded equals true. Okay, so looking at the other collision events. We have on collision stay. So let's add that one in. As you can see, it's exactly the same thing as entering a collider. While we are touching the ground, we'll check if that collider name is floor. And if that is so, then we are grounded. So what happens if we jump or 
we just leave the floor. On collision exit. So say time, I'll just copy that out again. But this time the story is different. Again, we, we're leaving a collision on exit. And if that other collider's game object name was floor, we've left the floor. So he's grounded, it's now false. So we've set up a boolean that will tell us if we are touching the floor or if we're not touching the floor. How do we affect our velocity with that? So we want to put another conditional check in here. If, so we want to check if something is true before we apply our velocity. What do we want to check if it's true? We want to check if we are grounded. If we are grounded, we are going to apply our own velocity. If we're not grounded, we're going to let the rigid body act under its own velocity. So therefore, gravity will be implemented. Got no compilation errors there. So we have our new boolean value here. So we'll watch our MPC character. See if we do have gravity now. So remember before, he would travel directly towards the player. Now, he still looks at the player, but he didn't start moving until he hit the floor. So this is what I did before. I lifted him up. Okay, just the thing with the rotation and the tilt. He did travel forward a bit. There we go. Because he did have a bit of forward momentum. It's like jumping forward. You're still falling forward. So there we go. We're maintaining the velocity of the rigid body. But while it's not grounded, we're not giving it any more force. He's not flying through the air like before. You see that? He's just quite happily falling to the ground first. So there we have it. Some more functionality to our rigid body character controller. There's another behavior that this character controller has that I want to fix up. Something that is not really easily noticeable unless we try and move the player around very quickly. So if I let that run, try and see if we can see those eyeballs and we can see the character moving around. Now if I try and quickly swap sides, you see that character instantly turns around to face. Now, I don't think anything can realistically, physically, especially when it's moving, suddenly stop and turn on the point and then turn around to face the opposite direction. There's going to be some kind of slowdown. There's going to be some time involved between that look. Okay? So how do we get this realistic behavior included into here? Well, we need to look at another new command. So we're using a quaternion because we're dealing with rotation. And when we spell it right, we will get some results. So we're dealing with rotations. Now how can we smoothly change the angle? So if we look at some class functions down here. We have a word here, interpolates. I, I don't even know exactly what that means. All I know is it's kind of a transition between one state and the next state. Okay, interpolation is a method of constructing new data points within a range of a discrete set of known data points. So, what is that saying? If we know our rotation, we know our current rotation, right? And we also know a rotation which we want. We're calculating a rotation here. So how can we smoothly change between our current rotation and our desired rotation? So back to the quaternion. Now we know what interpolate means. It's definitely one of these. We have spherically interpolate and interpolate. Now again, without much explanation, I'm going to jump on the slurp. Now, 
Slurp is more gradual than lerp. Like if I said lerp from 0, 0 to 1, 1, it's going to be pretty much linear to my understanding. Now if we say slurp, I'm going to get a more sinusoidal effect. Okay? So we get more of a curve. It's going to slowly change, and then it's going to pick up change quicker, and then it's going to slow down as it reaches its destination. So that's a bit realistic. We don't suddenly just turn and then stop and then keep moving. So let's try and implement this slurp. Look, even the Unity script reference is giving a rotation uh, example. So this is exactly what we're doing here. Let's type that in. So in our moving function, we calculate our desired rotation, call it look rotation, and here we directly apply that rotation. Now we want to slurp. Let's modify this. Quaternion slurp. And what are we slurping between? From an angle to an angle over time. That's here. So our from rotation is our current rotation. So that's where we're coming from. And where are we going to? We're going to our calculated look rotation. How fast are we going to do that? Well, we know we can put things that work over time. So that's definitely going to slurp between this rotation and this rotation over time. But again, we want to add a modifier just so that we can customize how quickly our character turns. So we have a move speed here. Let's create a turn speed. We'll just set that down to something low initially until we can play with that and see if we're getting some kind of result that we're desiring. So we'll let that compile out. We can try and zoom out so we can see our character. Let's hit play and see what changes that's made. Okay, did a bit of a dance there. Oh, because he was up in the air, of course. So from that perspective, he did a dance, but he actually fell to the ground. Okay, so see how I've turned behind him? And he's actually taking time to turn around. Zoom behind him. Look, he has to take his time to turn around. That's a far more realistic behavior. So now we can see there is a rotation speed before he speeds up to that. So let's play with that value. We have a turn speed here. So we cranked it right up to 10. Resume play. Focus on our player. Well, that wall's working, isn't it? Again, move behind him. Okay, that didn't speed up his turning particularly quick. Let's pump it up to 20. Okay, it's interesting that that's still quite slow. So I think I know where I've gone wrong. We created a variable. But I didn't actually put it in, so I'm not making any changes. So here's our turn speed. And we come down to our slurp. And as I assumed, yep, look, I didn't put the variable in. So now we're going to add our multiplier, our turn speed by times delta time. Now let's bring all our script values back to our defaults that we set in our code. So let's start again back at 2. We obviously saw how quickly or how slowly 1 turns. Let's try it on 2 like I was imagining. Okay. I hope you understand what's happened there. I've reset the script. So I'm using the values in the script now. So I've lost our target. Remember, we need a target because we're not finding it in the script yet. I think I should clear that up soon. But there's so much to learn. So let's try that again. We've got our inspector settings correct. We've saved our scene. Let's focus on the player and try again. There we go. He fell to the ground. Now let's get a perspective and start moving around. 
So as you can see, he's still got that turn, which he takes time to turn. He doesn't immediately turn around. Let's just put him behind a wall for a second. Now let's crank it up and see how that affects it. Now that we've added the multiplier to our slope command. Again, grab the player. As you can see, he's much faster to turn, but it's still realistic. It's not an immediate snap. Okay. Well, that's looking quite good. I believe so. Now, here's the next problem. What happens when we collide with an object? We have to add some kind of check for objects and find our way around objects. And that will be the next video.